نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من آخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اللہم الہمن رشدن و عزن من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقن اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقن اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will be starting our lesson from verse 74. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then your hearts became hardened after that, being like stones or even harder, for indeed there are stones from which rivers burst forth, and there are some of them that split open and water comes out. And there are some of them that fall down for the fear of Allah, and Allah is, un, is not unaware of what you do. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that there were a group of people whose hearts became hardened. Whose hearts became hardened, and why was it so? And then what was the result of all this? We connected with what we discussed in our last lesson in the last few verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrated the story of the people of Bani Israel when the nephews they killed, they killed their uncle uh, out of greed to inherit and then when they killed they started blaming each other and the matter was brought to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Hazrat Musa to tell them to slaughter a cow and strike the dead man's body with a limb of the cow, of the slaughtered cow. And uh, then we uh, talked about how they kept on questioning and er interrogating but then finally when they struck the body of the dead person, the murdered person with the limb of the cow, a miracle happened and by the will of Allah, the person got up, uh, was uh, alive and the person sat up and the person named his murderer. So this is exactly now where the story is continuing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commenting that it is these people of Bani Israel who, who experienced and who saw such a remarkable miracle that a dead person getting alive and then sitting up and then talking back again despite experiencing such a happening and seeing such a remarkable miracle they still failed to believe in Allah they still believed did not believe in the power in the authority in the control of Allah and not even in the life hereafter the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining here is that experiencing this miracle they did still fail to have believed the reason was that their hearts, hearts had hardened and Allah gives examples that their hearts were even harder than stones because we all think that stones are very hard so Allah says their hearts were even harder than stones and explains some examples in which stones show that they are not that hard as people think they are like the first example Allah explains is that there are times when the stones they split open and water comes out from them and rivers burst out. So the bursting of the stones and the flowing of the springs and the flowing of the rivers, Allah says, is what is actually the crying of the stones for the fear of Allah. 
but we do not perceive all this. Similarly, Allah is saying here that there are certain stones which fall down because of the fear of Allah. This is what? This is landslides when there is rain, when there is thunderstorm. Because of landslides, the stones, they, they tumble down and they roll down the mountains. And here Allah is saying what? That this is because they are humbling, humbly they are bowing down in a state of piety, in a state of fear of Allah. Little, little do we know, even despite being the superior beings, little do we know how the creations of Allah, they glorify Him, they worship Him, they fear Him, and because of all this, they obey Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have blessed us and that we are the superior beings and we are the followers of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Help us and guide us that we glorify you, that we praise you <coughs> and we worship you. And because of all that, we turn obedient to you better and more, more regularly than all the creations. Now, what happened when their hearts were hardened? The result was that despite observing the miracles of Allah, they failed to have faith and their faith did not increase. They failed to recognize Allah, His attributes, His powers, His authorities. They failed to recognize and believe the life hereafter and they persisted in their state of disbelief. So the lesson and the moral is that when the hearts get hardened then this leads to disbelief and this leads to disobedience so now to save ourselves from these state of affairs we need to do what we need to analyze and we need to understand the causes and the triggering factors of hardening of the people of Bani Israel's heart why did the why did their hearts harden? What were the causes and what were the triggering factors? What we learn from the previous uh, verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been explaining their behavior and mannerism, three behaviors, three manners and three attitudes led to this. Number one, disobedience to the dues of Allah, failure to obey the orders of Allah. Like we just read, that when Allah ordered them to slaughter the cow, they just would not. They stubbornly and they obstinately, they just kept on cross-questioning and kept on interrogating. And these were all what? These were the delaying techniques. And then the second reason, which was the triggering factor, was that they did not stop themselves from the don'ts of Allah. They did not refrain from which Allah had prohibited them. Like we went through the story of the people of Sabbath. What were they doing? They were not, they were prohibited to do any worldly activities like fishing and all on the day of Sabbath. But what were they doing? They kept on. They kept on. They evolved a system to ensure that the fish were caught. So directly or indirectly, despite the fact that they were prohibited to do so, they knowingly, very, very knowingly, they disobeyed Allah. And the third reason which we gather from here is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken a covenant of obedience from them. But they did what? They broke the covenants of Allah and they kept on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now we can gather and summarize from here that individuals or families or societies who do what they fail to obey the do's and orders of Allah number two they do not refrain from the don'ts of Allah and number three, they break the covenants of Allah, then their hearts will be hardened and then they will turn into stubborn, disobedient people or obstinate transgressors. 
اللہ لا تج اللہ او اللہ ہیلپ اس ناٹ بی فرام ون آف دیم بٹ ریمبر اٹس اٹس جسٹ ناٹ پرینگ دیٹ وی نیڈ اٹس جسٹ ناٹ پرینگ ٹو اللہ دیٹ مے وی ناٹ بی ون آف دیم دس از جسٹ ناٹ سفیشنٹ وٹ وی نیڈ ٹو ڈو از وی نیڈ ٹو ورک اپان اٹ دیٹ وی نیڈ ٹو ٹرائی ٹو بے اللہ وی نیڈ ٹو ورک ہارڈر ٹو پروینٹ دا ڈس اوبیڈینسز آف اللہ ان آور لائف اینڈ وی نیڈ ٹو میک آر سیلس کانشیس آف دا فیکٹ دیٹ وی نیڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو فلفل دا کانفیڈینس آف اللہ اینڈ دین وی آلسو نیڈ ٹو لرن اینڈ اٹاپٹ واٹ پروفیس اللہ علیہ وسلم ہیز سجیسٹڈ آل آف آس فار سافٹنگ آف دا ہارٹس سرٹن تھنگس اینڈ ایکٹیویٹیز سجیسٹڈ بائی دا پروفیس اللہ علیہ وسلم ویچ سافن دا ہارٹس نمبر ون mention death frequently remembering death and mentioning and talking about death and remembering that i am not just going to stay here for all this and all these things are not just going to possess by me always i am going to depart i will have to leave and then the second thing suggested by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being kind loving and merciful to the orphans that is what a manner of caring helping supporting the deprived the underprivileged class of the society will soften the hearts and the third suggested by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is remembrance of allah zikr this softens the heart and this remembrance of allah can be as salah establishing of salah recitation of quran and zikr after salah the supplications of the morning and evening and then different supplications and tasbihat taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reciting all these will lead to the softening of the heart for the person in whose heart is the remembrance of allah and whose tongue is supple with the name of allah then shaitan will not be able to effect that person and then the heart of the person will not become hard and the heart will stay and will become soft and so the person will become a pious will become a righteous will become an obedient person of Allah Allahumma ja'alna minhum verse number 75 do you covet Or do you hope, O believers, that they would believe for you, while a party of them used to hear the words of Allah and then distort the Torah after they had understood it while they were knowing? Now, in this verse, after explaining the behavior and the state of affairs of the people of Bani Israel, Allah is commenting that to have hope. that to have hope that such a group of hard hearted stubborn minded obstinate group of people will believe will believe all this and hoping in all this is like it's like next to impossible allah is also mentioning another behavior of the bani israel that they would do what that they would twist their tongue and they would intentionally and knowingly out of sheer mischief they would distort the words of allah to do what to give an effect of changing the commandments of Allah verse number 76 <coughs> and when they meet those who believe they say we have believed but when they are alone with one another they say do you talk to them about what allah has revealed to you so they can argue with you about it before your lord then will you not reason this verse highlights the hypocrisy of bani israel and highlights the difference in their inner state of feelings and their outwardly behavior and the verse also proves that they had recognized the prophethood of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they had recognized and they realized that the quran was the true book of allah and this was all because of what they have they had been prophesied in their books they had been mentioned 
of all this before the prophethood or prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this book in their books but they would knowingly and very purposefully not only refuse it themselves but they would also stop all the other Jews to disclose the truth to other people in case this would become a source of argument before the Lord when they were presented to Allah on the day of judgment verse number 77 Allah says but they but do they not know that Allah knows what they conceal and what they declare so to these Bani Israel who were trying to change the words of Allah and distort the words of Torah and knowing the truth of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's prophethood and that Quran was the true book of Allah they were not believing themselves and they were stopping the other Jews to talk about it and highlight stop highlighting the truth of all this to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned them in the words that you have a difference you are acting as hypocrites and you are uh, not accepting it and you're stopping uh, others to believe in this also but remember Allah knows what you are trying to conceal and what you are trying to accept verse number 78 and among them are the unlettered words unlettered ones who do not know the scripture except in wishful thinking but they are only assuming Allah says وَمِّنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابِ So in this verse Allah is saying and talking that among the people of Bani Israel there are a few people who are what? They are Ummiyun. Ummiyun means what? It is the plural for ummi. And in Arabic, ummi means a person who is uneducated, illiterate, or a person who does not know how to read and write. So here in this verse, who is Allah labeling and calling as Ummiyun, the people who do what? La ya'lamun al kitab. Those who do not have the knowledge of the holy book given to them or the divine scripture given to them. So, when, once Allah says, once they do not have the knowledge of their holy book, what do they do? They follow or they pursue their wishful thinking or their own desires, what they assume to be right. So what we understand from this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that from among Bani Israel, those who do not have the knowledge of Torah, they are ummi, they are illiterate in the eyes of Allah. We just need to stop here and we need to think that if Jews, Jews whose book, whose holy book was neither complete nor perfect nor protected, so even if the book who, which was not complete or perfect or protected, even not having its knowledge made them illiterate and uneducated in the eyes of Allah, then what? What would be the status of the followers of Prophet wasallam who have been blessed with the book about which Allah says what? In Surah Maida, Allah says, Al Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Dinukum, Wa Akmamtu Alaikum Nirmati, Wa Razitu Lakumul Islam Adina. Allah has completed religion, Allah has perfected religion, and Allah has liked it and chosen it for us. And then Allah says in Quran, Inna Nahnu Nadhil Nadhikrawa, Nahnu Lahu Lahafizun. Allah says that we have revealed, we have sent down this book. And we ourselves are going to protect it. So this Quran is complete. It is perfect. And it, for it, Allah has taken charge of its protection himself. So now imagine if we, if we or our families, we do not have the knowledge of this perfected, completed, per protected book of guidance from Allah then what will be our status in the eyes of Allah? Remember, remember, if we or our children 
We may be having the highest qualifications and the best of academic degrees, but if we lack the knowledge of Quran, then we will still be among the ignorance and illiterates in the eyes of Allah. A person might be a doctor, a top-of-the-line consultant, a professor, an engineer, a chartered accountant, a lawyer. But if the person is unaware of the teachings and the messages of Quran and Hadith, the person will still be one of the literates, illiterates, uneducated people, Ummi Yun in the sight of Allah. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Because you know, what a person, about a person having all the qualifications and the best of the degrees in the world, graduating from like one of the Ivy Leagues, but the person does not have the knowledge of Al-Kitab, the best book of Allah, will not be able to avail of his worldly knowledge to gain the player of Allah. Despite of his worldly education and knowledge, the person will not be able to use this worldly knowledge to trade for Jannah. The, world, the worldly knowledge cannot be a guide for Jannah. The worldly knowledge cannot save from the wrath of Allah and the worldly knowledge cannot save the person from the torments of hellfire. To use the worldly knowledge in a way beneficial for hereafter, we need to be guided by the knowledge of the book of Allah. That is why, that is why I request and urge the mothers to lead, to learn Quran themselves and to connect the children with Quran also. Just, just realize how much money how much money, time, energy is spent for the worldly education? A child, when turns two and a half years, starts schooling. And college study continues like till 27, 28 years of age. Just imagine spending 25 years of the youth, of the life for worldly education. Okay, fine, go ahead, do that. We need to acquire the worldly education. Quran does not. Quran just does not deter the followers of Prophet for acquiring the worldly education. Islam does not disapprove from acquiring the worldly education. In fact, what we learn from the stories of the creation of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, the importance of ilm, the importance of knowledge in Islam and Quran. I mentioned there Hazrat Adam salam after creation the first the first thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did Allah al Adama the first revelation to the last Prophet salam, was what Ikra read and Hazrat Jibra'il alayhi salam would go on insisting Ikra 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 this was the first revelation and the second revelation Wal Qalam Allah swore for the pen so this highlights what? The importance of reading and writing in Islam and in the teachings of Quran. And the battle of Badr, you know, there were 70 prisoners. Ransom of those who were literate was made as teaching 10 people in Medina. And they were told that when the 10 people given to them, when they would start reading and writing, then they would, they would be freed. So, this highlights what? <coughs> this highlights the importance of worldly education in the, in the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ used to say regarding Hazrat Aisha, ta'ala anha, teach Aisha maths, teach Aisha the medical sciences, and a companion, Hazrat Layla Ghafariya, ta'ala anha, she had learned surgical skills. So remember, Islam does not stop us all from acquiring worldly education, be it be males or females. We need to gain the worldly knowledge and skills to help us progress and prosper in all the spheres of life. Otherwise, the Muslims would be underdeveloped and they would lag behind in the various fields of life internationally also. 
Moreover, Quran does not demand in any way that all the followers become the scholars of Quran and they become the teachers of Quran or they become the preachers of Quran and Hadith. Although we do know that Khairu Kumman Ta'allam al Qurana wa Allamahu that the best group of people from among you is those who learn the Quran and teach it to others, but it is not mandatory, it is not obligatory for all to become the scholars of Quran and Hadith. But what is actually needed and expected and instructed is that all the Muslims who have faith in Quran and who have faith in Allah, at least they should know and they should understand and they should comprehend the message of Quran so that, so that when they can spend their life according to the Islamic code of life, at least reading and learning of Quran and Hadith to the extent that they should be able to spend life as a practicing Muslim. So what is needed as a balanced outlook is when spending all the money and the time and energy for like 25 years to gain the worldly knowledge, I would request all of you to spend at least one year, one year, for the knowledge of Quran at least. And if you if you cannot spend full one year, then at least one month, the month of Ramadan. Every year, at least one month in the month of Ramadan, connect with Adore Quran, where we go through the message of Quran, inshallah and inshallah, inshallah, by the will of Allah, by the help of Allah, by the guidance of Allah. Inshallah this year, I will... With the help of Allah, I will go through the complete Quran. And inshallah, in a 30-day session in Ramzan this year, we shall be covering one juz of Quran daily. And we will be completing our journey of Quran in, inshallah, 30 days. We will be starting our Dore Quran uh, like about three days prior to Ramzan so that we can wind up our session on the 27th of Ramadan. May Allah help us and guide us and protect us. Now, if we can't spend one month in a year, then at least we can spend one day in a week, our weekly classes, our weekly sessions live online. And you know what? I always request and urge the mothers to send daughters to the youth wing sessions for teenagers or our Binti Islam sessions for the under 10 girls. But you know what happens when we invite them on the weekdays? Generally, mothers come up and they refuse. They say that they have to go to the schools and colleges. Okay, then we invite them in the evening sessions. They say they have to go to the tuition centers. And when we invite them on the weekends, saying that no school and now no tuitions, let your daughters come on the weekend sessions, then generally they complain that they are tired and they need a break and they need a rest okay fine then we invite them in the summer sessions in the summer breaks and generally they come up they the mothers tell us that they have taken up a cooking course a baking course a makeup course so there you are are there mothers who come up with the excuse that the quran class is like too far off and we don't have transport and we can't arrange for the pick and drop. Really? Really, is it so? We have transport. We have transport for the birthday parties in the farthest part of the city. But we find it difficult to connect to a Quran session a few houses or a few streets away. Remember, the best gift parents can give their children is good education. And the best education is what is the education of Quran and Hadith. I always request the mothers to, who are arranging and who are planning for the dowry of their daughters. I shall be talking about dowry somewhere else, inshallah. But I keep on requesting them that for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the love of the Prophet wasallam, please, please, please give your daughters in dowry, give them the do knowledge of at least five surahs of Quran. At least five. Dress them up with the jewelry of at least five surahs of Quran. Surah Baqarah, Surah Nisa, Surah Nur, Surah Ahzab and Surah Hujrat. 
and I would here mention the promise of Prophet Wasallam. There is a lengthy hadith and I am just explaining the concept which the words of Prophet Wasallam explained. Prophet Wasallam told us that on the day of judgment there will be a person who will be blessed with one of the best of the two robes of Jannah. And then he will be he will be given a crown. And Prophet said this crown will be shining and it will be shining even more than that if the sun would descend to your courtyard, the, this crown would be even more brighter than that. And the person will be curious. This blessed person will be curious and he will ask, why am I being blessed with all this? And he will be told, on account of the Quran, you taught your children and they acted upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us connect with Quran. Help our children connect with Quran. And bless us with a connection of the Quran. With full full enthusiasm and full concentration and full desire to learn it, to understand it, to comprehend it and to act upon it. Verse number 79. So woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands and then they say this is from Allah in order to exchange it for a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn. Allah says, woe to the people. Allah says, fawail. Wail means what? Wail means destruction. And wail also refers to a, a very deep ditch in the hellfire. So Allah is saying that woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands. It means what? That they try to alter the commandments of Allah according to what? According to their own desires and own wishes. And they exchange it. They do so for the exchange of what? For a small price. And what small price does this mean? It means the price of this worldly gains and benefits. Like to save themselves from the worldly losses or to acquire the worldly gains and then they try to make attempt to alter the writing of the holy scriptures verse number 80 and they say never will the fire touch us never will the fire touch us except for a few days Say, have you taken a covenant with Allah? For Allah will never break his covenant. Or do you say about Allah that which you do not know? Now in this verse number 80, Allah is explaining the actual cause behind all these disobedient behavior of the people of Bani Israel. Because we know that in the last few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been continuously mentioning and talking about and obviously condemning and negating the disobedient and the transgressing behavior of the disobedience of uh, the people of Bani Israel. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is explaining the underlying factors which triggered the disobedience of the people of the book. Their wrong belief about the day of judgment. The basic reason was what? Their wrong belief about the day of judgment. The false belief was that they thought that they would be saved from the torments of hellfire. As they, I've already previously explained that the Jews thought what? The Jews thought and they claimed that they were what? Nahnu ahibahu. That they were the beloveds of Allah. So they will just not be punished by the hellfire. And uh, they said that uh, the 40 days they had worshipped the calf. It will be only because of those 40 days that they will be punished by the hellfire. And rest will all be forgiven by Allah. And the Christians, 
They claim wrongly that on account of the crucifixion of the Christ, that such a big sacrifice for the sake of Allah by the Prophet had exempted all the sins of all the followers of the Christ. And hence, they will be also solved, uh, saved from the torments of the hellfire. This self-created baseless false belief about the day of judgment led to a release phenomena since a person is just not worried about the punishments of the day of judgment this leads to a release phenomena and this causes this person to have a release phenomena to disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this highlights what this highlights the importance of the correct and the true faith and belief and it also highlights the importance of faith on the life of hereafter and the faith on the day of judgment. So to disapprove and to commend and to negate the false self-created belief of the people of the book, Allah has asked them that if they have taken a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ أَتَّخَسْتُ مِنْ بِاللَّهِ أَحْدًا وَلَيْ يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ أَحْدَهُ that have you taken a covenant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is obliged to fulfill the covenant or you were just speaking of things which you just do not know about. So it is also condemned to comment about something which we do not know. They, you do see people commenting about the commandments of Allah and they are not aware of the teachings of Quran at all. Verse number 81 Now, after asking the Jews in the previous verse that if they have taken a covenant from Allah, in this verse, Allah has explained the actual fact and the actual conditions which are going to happen on the day of judgment and the actual state of affairs. Uh, Allah says the real state of affairs on the day of judgment will be torn totally contrary to their false fabricated beliefs. And they will be what? It is as clear, it is as clear as 2 plus 2. What Allah says, whoever earns evil, whoever earns evil and his sins has encompassed him, those are the companions of fire and they will abide there eternally. But those who believe, those who believe, and they do righteous deeds. Those are the companions of paradise. And they will abide therein eternally. So the concepts clear as two plus two are what? That whoever commits sins and he spends a sinful life will be tormented in hellfire. Irrespective of the fact that the person might be the relationship of a prophet of a very uh, righteous and a pious person irrespective of the family the caste the creed and in contrast to that all those people who have a combo of what of belief and righteous deeds they will be blessed with paradise and they will be there eternally allahumma ajirna min nar Allahumma ajirna minan nar Allahumma ajirna minan nar Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil jannah Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil jannah Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil jannah Allahumma hasibna hisabin yasira Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannatu al-firdaus Rabba nasrif anna azaba jahannum Inna azabaha qana gharama Inna ha saat mustakarrum wa maqama Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayrul rahimin Rabbana zalamna Anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin ba'atubu alayk Rabbana la tuzi' qalubana ba'da izhadaytana wa hablana milladunka rahma 
innaka antal wahhab subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun was salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin